Hello, this is CJ Hoyle. Today is Monday, June the 6th, 2022, and welcome to day three of my Grand River solo canoeing adventure. So the time is currently 6 a.m., and I spent the evening last night camped here at the Bingham's Campground, located within the city of Kitchener. When I got into my tent last night, there was some light rain falling, and that rain continued throughout the night, but it always remained quite light, so it was a relatively dry night, and of course, everything stayed nice and dry inside of my tent. The rain must have stopped a few hours ago, because I'm noticing that the outside of my tent is completely dry already. So the time is now 6.45, and I've got my campsite all packed up. Now I can get the canoe down to the water. All right, so the time is now 7 a.m., and as I say goodbye to Bingamans, I'm here in the canoe with everything loaded and ready to begin day three of paddling, continuing further down the Grand River. So my journey today should take me the rest of the way through the city of Kitchener, where I'll then enter the city of Cambridge, and I'll actually be paddling a little bit beyond Cambridge. And tonight I'm going to be doing something that I've never done before, uh, which is that I'll be camping somewhere that's not designated as an actual campsite or campground, and that's because I'm planning on camping on one of the islands in the middle of the river. So it's a nice, calm, peaceful morning out on the river this morning. Overhead, there's quite a bit of cloud coverage, but according to the weather forecast, there's not supposed to be any rain this morning, although this afternoon may be a different story. Up ahead, I can see the first of many bridges that'll be going under today coming into view. So this bridge carries Kitchener's Victoria Street North, and just beyond that bridge, there's another bridge, and that one's a railway bridge. This bridge carries CN Railway Line's Guelph subdivision, which includes the Kitchener GO Train. I actually went across that bridge last November on the GO Train trip that I took to London, Ontario. So up ahead, we're just paddling into a fairly industrial part of the river. So over on the right side of the river, there's a cement plant, and this structure which goes across the river, as far as I can tell, it's not a bridge. It's actually some kind of a conveyor belt because there is a rock quarry over on the left-hand side, so they use that conveyor belt for getting the material from one side of the river to the other. Although considering it doesn't look like there's anything connected to the left side of it, this may no longer be in operation. So the paddling's been really good so far this morning. The water has remained nice and deep, which has meant I haven't had to get out and do any walking yet, which I appreciate. I've been noticing a lot of airplanes today, and that's because just up ahead on the left, I'll be paddling past the region of Waterloo International Airport. So the time is now about eight o'clock, and I've paddled six kilometers so far, and I'm starting to feel kind of hungry for breakfast. Uh, but rather than pulling the canoe over to the side and stopping and eating, because the, the river is fairly you know, deep here and there's a bit of current, I think I'll just try eating in the canoe and letting the canoe drift as I eat. I've got some of my campsite overnight oats here to eat and some orange juice to drink. So my breakfast on the water ended up working out pretty well, so I'll probably do that again in the future. The time is now about 8.30 and I've just about reached the Fairway Road North Bridge. And I should also mention that I've now entered the city of Cambridge, or at least kind of entered it. Uh, the land over on this side is Cambridge, but the other side is still Kitchener. And up ahead, I'll be going back into Kitchener before eventually entering Cambridge for good. There's somebody's nice home along the river. Despite being on the border of two cities, Kitchener and Cambridge, there are actually very few homes that are built right on the river. Well, despite that gray cloudy start this morning, I'm starting to see a little bit of blue peeking through the clouds now. Despite this momentary sunshine though, there is currently a special weather advisory for this area in effect because they're expecting a fair bit of rain later today uh, as well as possibly some thunder showers. So of course I'll have to be cognizant of that. So the time is now nine o'clock and I've paddled 11 kilometers so far today. I've now got two more bridges to paddle under coming up ahead. The first bridge is a railroad bridge which carries CP Rail Line's Waterloo subdivision. The second bridge is called the Freeport Bridge, and it carries Kitchener's King Street East. The Freeport Bridge is a concrete bowstring through arch bridge, which was built back in 1926. It's the same style of bridge as the Bridgeport Bridge that I saw yesterday, except this one is longer and older. Just around the corner, there's another bridge. This one carries Highway 8. And over here, I'm noticing the first warning sign for the upcoming Weir Dam that I'll have to portage around. I'm actually noticing that Highway 8 is actually two bridges. So just downstream of here is the Mannheim Weir, and I'll be portaging around it, and the portage route is on the left side of the river. 
So there's another posted warning sign, and there are also some buoys floating in the river there. So the weir is straight ahead that way, and the portage route is well marked over here on the left. A weir is a type of dam where the water is designed to flow over the top of it. The Mannheim Weir is one of six dams which I'll be portaging around during this eight-day canoe trip. With an approximate length of only 95 meters, I believe this will be the shortest portage of my trip, although all the others are relatively short too. At the moment I'm carrying the canoe across the portage, with one load of stuff which I've already carried to the bottom, and one final load that's still left to grab back at the top. So the time is now about 10 o'clock, and I've got the canoe loaded back up again, ready to get inside and keep on paddling down the river. Those white birds over on the left are called great egrets. Those are the first of those that I've seen on this trip. So the time is now 10.30, and with 17.6 kilometers under my belt, I've now paddled about halfway to my destination, and currently I'm fighting a bit of a wind. Up ahead I can see another bridge coming into view. This one's a pedestrian bridge, which belongs to the Walter Bean Grand River Trail. Over on the left here I'm paddling past a place called the Pioneer Sportsman Club. This club includes a seasonal camping area, which is what I can see here. And over on the right I'm paddling past the Dune Valley Golf Club. And now on the left side I'm passing the River Edge Golf Club. Up ahead in the distance I can hear an awful lot of traffic noise. The traffic noise of course is coming from these bridges up ahead, which carry Highway 401. It looks like they're currently doing some rehabilitation work on this bridge. Well the time is now 11.20 and I paddled about 21.7 kilometers and this is the first section that I've had to walk through today. It's been deep enough for paddling everywhere else otherwise. So after coming under that bridge, I've now officially left the city of Kitchener and re-entered Cambridge, and that goes for both sides of the river this time. Today is a day of many bridges, and up ahead I can already see the next one coming into view. The road which this bridge carries is called Fountain Street South. So the time is now 12 noon, and I've paddled about 24 and a half kilometers, and I've hit a section of the river here where it's shallow, and the canoe will not go any further, so I'll have to stand up and walk for a bit, but before I do, I think I'll take a break here and have some lunch. So for my lunch today, I'm gonna to make myself a tuna salad sandwich, and I'll also have an apple to eat and probably snack on some granola bars as well. All right, so I'm now finished my lunch and ready to keep on paddling. So over here on the left, you can see some water that's flowing into the Grand River, and that's from a river called the Speed River, which flows from up north of Guelph area and goes right through the city of Guelph before eventually coming over here through Cambridge and joining the Grand. A couple of years ago, I camped at a campground which is located on Guelph Lake, and Guelph Lake is an artificial lake that was created by building a dam across the Speed River. So I was just noticing this sedimentary rock face along the side of the river. Haven't seen any scenery like that during my trip so far, although a little bit upstream of where I started within the Allura Gorge would have looked like that on either side. So the time is now 1 p.m. and I've paddled 27 kilometers so far and I'm just feeling a couple of raindrops coming down, but I guess we'll have to wait and see how much rain that actually amounts to. Noticing the other side of the river also has a sedimentary rock cliff here. And over here on the left, I'm just paddling past the Galt Country Club. This seems like a really scenic part of the river. It's just a shame that our sky has gone back to being gray and cloudy again. So up ahead, I can see some buildings on the left, which presumably are part of the Galt area, which I'm paddling towards. The city of Cambridge was formed when three smaller communities were merged into one, and Galt, which is the one that I'm approaching, is built on the Grand River, where the other two were built on the Speed River that I passed earlier. So that building over there is the Cambridge Memorial Hospital, and up ahead the river takes a bit of a turn before entering Galt. So as we get closer to Galt, the rain has now stopped, at least momentarily, and the sun is even peeking a bit through the clouds. And up ahead I can see our next bridge emerging from behind the trees, and I'm even going to get to see a train crossing over that bridge. Now there's a train coming from the other direction, although it's only three locomotives, not carrying any cars with them on this trek. So this bridge carries CP Rail Line's Galt subdivision, and it was built way back in 1931. The bridge appears to be using all of its original stone foundations, and this style of bridge is called a rivet-connected Pratt Deck Truss Bridge. So up ahead I can see a couple of buoys floating in the water, and that's because up ahead there's another weir that I need to portage around. And one of the options for that portage is to get out right here and walk along beside that road, 
But I've done some research and there's actually a much shorter portage which you can take, which is down that way. The only downside of that is that you have to get much closer to the weir, which may not be the best option for inexperienced paddlers. So I'm getting pretty close to the portage now, and this will mean that I'll need to paddle past those buoys, which seems a little bit scary, but I have consulted with some local paddlers and they've told me that what I'm about to do is perfectly safe. I was told that the only hazard to be aware of is that there might be some poison ivy on the trail. So you can kind of see there up ahead where the water just drops off, and this land over here on the right is where I'm going to get off so I can begin the portage. So I've got the canoe pulled onto the land and all the stuff unloaded from it, so now I'll walk down that trail and carry my stuff down to the bottom of the dam. So I've carried one load of my stuff down to the bottom of the dam, and here you can see it from the bottom. This dam is called the Park Hill Dam, and the portage route even includes a set of stairs that you can come down. So here's a look at the dam from the top. And just downstream of it is where the historic downtown of Galt is located. That sure would be a long way down if you missed the portage. And the warnings that I was given about poison ivy are accurate, because you can see that along here there's quite a bit of this stuff. I guess another tricky part of the portage is that the spot where you have to put the canoe back in the water is a little bit turbulent. Of course it gets less turbulent further downstream, but this concrete wall is way too high above the water level to be able to get in. But before I get back on the water, I've actually got the canoe locked up here. So I'm going to go and walk around Galt a little bit, So I've never been here before. So I've just walked up to the top of the Park Hill Bridge, and of course you can see the dam back that way. And my plan is I'm going to walk over this way, and over there to the left, that's where the downtown of Galt should be. So over on the other side of the river are the ruins of the old Turnbull Mill. Further down the river on the other side, you can see a bunch of old historic buildings along with a couple of big church steeples. So here on Water Street, I can see the old post office and a couple of the downtown businesses. And that tall building over there with the clock tower is the Cambridge City Hall. And back behind me here is Main Street, which is currently closed to pedestrians only. Well, I'm certainly enjoying this walk. Galt definitely has a very nice, pretty historic downtown. So I'm now gonna head back over to the other side of the river and I'll use the Main Street Bridge to get there. So this church here is the Central Presbyterian Church. And this building over here houses the University of Waterloo School of Architecture. And this church here is called the Grace Bible Church, although there's a sign on it which also says Knox's Church, dating back to 1869. So the time is only about four o'clock and I'm still not hungry for dinner yet. But what I decided to do was to stop at a restaurant called Mai Tai and order some Thai takeout food which I can take with me to my campsite because where I'm staying tonight, there won't be any restaurants nearby. All right, so me and the takeout food have now made it back to the canoe. Now to get everything loaded back up, get the canoe in the water and paddle further downstream. So that bridge where I left the canoe back behind me is the Park Hill Road Bridge. And I've been noticing how the sides of the river here have these really big concrete walls. And that's because back in 1974, there was a bad flood here in Galt. So they built those to protect against future flooding. So this here is the Main Street Bridge, which I walked across earlier, and it was built back in 1931. And it is a concrete bowstring through arch bridge, similar to that one that I saw earlier today, although this one's only two spans long. Over here on the left, I was noticing this old building, which has had a relatively recent addition to it. So the next bridge in my path is a pedestrian bridge called the Craig's Crossing Bridge. This bridge was completed in 2018, but it's supported by a pier which is built on top of a foundation, which was used by a bridge which carried a spur of the Grand River Railway across the river. And as the rain starts to pick up again, this bridge up ahead is the final bridge that I'll be paddling underneath of today on my day of many bridges. This bridge is called the Cedar Street Bridge. So the rain seems to be slowing down as I paddle my way out of Galt, and I've only got a couple more kilometers until I get to my destination. Tonight I'm actually going to be doing something a little bit different for my accommodations. Because there's a large section of the river which doesn't have any campgrounds, tonight I'm actually going to be setting up my tent on one of the islands in the middle of the river. Well, the rain has picked up again, but as far as I can tell, that island which is straight ahead with those trees on it is where I'll be making my home tonight. And the tip of this island here also represents the city limits of the city of Cambridge. The territory beyond here is part of the township of North Dumfries. So the island seems a little bit rocky and kind of overgrown, but I'm sure I shouldn't have too much trouble finding a spot for my tent. So I found a spot back there on high ground, which doesn't seem to be on rock. So I'm gonna take my tent there and get it set up so I can put all my stuff inside it. So 
it can stop getting rained on. So as the rain starts up again out there on the river, now let me give you a tour of my campsite. So over there I've got the canoe pulled up onto the land and tied onto a tree. And just peeking through the grass there you can see my tent. And I've also got a bunch of stuff that I've left down here on this clearing, including my food. So that's probably where I'm going to eat my dinner tonight. To get to the tent there's a bit of a trail back here that I can follow. And I've got the tent nestled back here among the wildflowers. So based on the research that I did, I found that it's very common for people who paddle the Grand to spend their nights camping on islands like this. In fact, a lot of people who paddle it don't even stay at campgrounds. They do something like this pretty much every night. Now in my research, however, I also wasn't able to confirm whether or not this is actually legal. But what I have at least done for this particular island is I've checked the local property maps to confirm that this is not private property, this is actually public land. So at least I know for sure that I'm not trespassing. So the rain has picked up a bit so I've retreated inside my tent here to wait it out. So I haven't seen any poison ivy on this island yet, but I've seen a lot of this plant here, which is called stinging nettles. Stinging nettles have these little hairs on them which poke into your skin and cause your skin to tingle. As you can see, I'm wearing my rain pants to protect my legs against this, but I'll admit that this is a lesson that I learned the hard way first. So the time is now 5.30, and the rain seems to have calmed down a bit, which makes it a good time for me to have my dinner. So from the Thai restaurant in Cambridge, I ordered their Massaman curry with rice. For a long time, Thai curries have been one of my favorite things to eat, so I always try to get it at least once on all of my vacations. And this restaurant certainly didn't disappoint. This curry is absolutely delicious. And as I eat my dinner, I can see a mother duck swimming past with her eight ducklings in tow. So I just looked up for my food and look what I saw in the middle of the river. That of course is a deer. Not really sure where it came from. It is possible that it has been sharing this island here with me this afternoon. So that will pretty well wrap things up in terms of day three of this trip. My total paddling distance today was around 34 kilometers and I really enjoyed the paddling. Uh, the scenery was uh, really nice and the water was you know, deep enough for me to be able to paddle uh, without having to worry about getting out every now and again. There were a couple of sections that I had to walk but for the most part I was able to paddle through it. Uh, I also did those two portages today which both went quite smoothly. Uh, I'm obviously not packing particularly light on this trip. I've got a lot of stuff, but I was able to consolidate my stuff down uh, into being able to take just two loads of stuff across, uh, plus the load uh, with the canoe. Uh, so that was, you know, it worked out pretty well, and obviously they weren't very long portages. Um, but, and I also really enjoyed uh, getting to visit uh, Galt today for the first time. It's a really nice little town, or I guess it's part of a city now, but uh, it obviously originally was a very nice little town. Uh, and of course I'm looking forward to tomorrow as well, where I'll be paddling uh, approximately the same distance, around 34 kilometers again tomorrow. And I'll also be uh, passing through another small little town, which is called Paris, Ontario. And tomorrow also will feature uh, two portages as well. Uh, but tomorrow, rather than camping on an island, I'm actually going to be camping at a uh, conservation area campground, which I'm uh, looking forward to. Uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed joining me for day number three of this trip. If you watched all the way to the end of this video, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.